Hello guys, welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm going to show you how we can use a tool called Cisco Virtual Activity Desktop provided by the Cisco for IT Essential course to learn about the hardware assembling and disassembling process and about the different hardware components. First, to download that Virtual Activity Desktop file, go to your browser and search for Cisco NetAc ad. You get this first link www.netacad.com. It is a learning platform provided by Cisco, which is a networking academy. Click on it, click login, select login, give your email or username. give the password and now the login is successful so in order to be able to download the Cisco virtual activity desktop file or any resource file you should be a instructor inside the Cisco networking Academy now let's go to the resources and go to all resources go to course resources go down and source for IT essentials here it is IT essentials you can go to version 5 or version 6 Cisco IT virtual desktop activity and laptop virtual desktop activity is not available in version 7 so go to version 6.0 and choose the English version go down and you can see the virtual activity desktop and virtual activity laptop file this is for the desktop assembling and disassembling process and this is for the laptop assembling and disassembling process i will make a separate video about the virtual activity laptop later on so first go and click on virtual activity desktop this will redirect you to our download link and you can click on save to download I'm going to click on cancel because I have already downloaded it. Also, you can click on the virtual activity laptop to download the laptop. You can click on save. I have already downloaded this also. So I am going to click on cancel. You can see that the virtual activity desktop and virtual activity laptop has already been downloaded. Just you can now select this zip file right click use any of the softwares like 7zip or winrar and you can click on extract to virtual activity desktop and do the similar process for this virtual activity laptop as well and you will get this virtual activity desktop and virtual activity laptop folder now let's go to virtual activity desktop folder and open it you can see all these files simply you have to go to the index file and run it using your browser but one thing to remember google browsers has now discontinued the flash player so you can use any other browsers to open it in my case i am going to use the internet explorer if you want to check which application you are using to open it you can go to right click go to properties and see it opens with internet explorer select ok now double click on this index file it is saying that internet explorer restricted this web page from running scripts or active x control you can now click allow blocked content for this time so i got this screen saying welcome to id essentials virtual desktop this is our introduction screen and this tells us about the importance of virtual desktop. It enables us to learn the steps required to assemble our desktop computer, explore the hardware components and test our knowledge. This is the first time so it is going to take a tour of this platform. Select next. There are three main modes. One is the learn mode another one is the test mode and another one is the explore mode in the learn mode you will get all the step-by-step -step guideline on the steps of how to assemble your computer system 
in the test mode you don't get any kind of instruction you just have to do the assembling and disassembling process on your own and in explore mode you can simply look after all the components see the 360 view see different kind of view from top left right down and check the components one by one and get a detailed information you can click on next this is about the learn mode which is explaining about it in this mode we get all the instructions these are the different hardware components which are placed on the anti-static mat which are used for assembling process and this is the workspace where we will be working on on our PC and we will install all the components one by one and on the explore mode you can use the explore mode to have a 360 view of your device let's begin the assembling process you can either go to this one by one step for power supply motherboard adapter cards internal drives external drives internal cables or external cables I'm simply going to click on the skip and now I will use the lawn tab now here comes a problem if you guys are facing an error of loading data on this part of the screen which looks like this then you can watch my other videos which is linked on the i button to know how to solve this error i have already made a separate video on how to solve this loading data error so go and check it out first solve that error id essential virtual desktop platform running and then come back here to learn about the assembling process so the first component that we are going to assemble is the power supply we are on the learn mode first we will complete all the task in the learn mode and then we will go to the test mode and then we will go to the explore mode so let's start from the learn mode the first component we are going to install is the power supply a power supply provides the needed voltage to power the various electronic circuits that make up the PC attach the power supply to the case so if you click on show instruction it is going to give us a step-by-step -step guideline on how we can install the power supply so first we have to move the power supply from this panel select the power supply and drag it right here and leave it now we have to align the holes in the power supply with the holes in the case for that you can use this or this button to move it around once you feel that the device is now aligned you can click on this button let me align it and now it is installed now you have to secure the power supply in place with the screws select the power supply screws drag it and you can see that there is the highlighted portion you can simply simply drag the screw and leave it to this area the screws will get automatically attached now you have completed installing the items on this layer you may now return to the course lesson or continue exploring your virtual computer you can simply click on ok now let's go on the motherboard section now in motherboard we have to first prepare our motherboard and then only install the motherboard in the CPU you can click on the show instruction palette to get the instruction you can see on the bottom part first there is a RAM which we have to install simply select this RAM and drag it right here on the highlighted portion and leave your RAM we need to now align the RAM according to this notch now we have to click this highlighted latches to secure the RAM the first RAM is secured let's go and install the second RAM now it's time to install the CPU you can see the CPU component is right here and we have the CPU socket over here click on the CPU and drag it right here on the highlighted area now we need to align this CPU according to this CPU socket if you see there is a notch in the CPU right here and also there is a notch in the CPU socket right here 
that means we have to turn the CPU on this side. So let's turn it. Click the highlighted area to secure the CPU socket. Click this highlighted area to lock the CPU in the place. Now our CPU has been installed. It's time to install the thermal paste which allows the heat to get transferred from CPU to the heatsink very easily. Now select this thermal paste, click on it and drag it right here and leave it. The thermal paste is applied. Now it's time to install the heatsink. Select the heatsink, drag it right here and leave it. Now you need to select this highlighted area in order to lock this heatsink from the motherboard. Also click on this highlighted area to install the heatsink fan socket. Arrange it and check the alignment. Click on this button. The wire is connected. The motherboard has been installed. We have first installed the RAM which is used for storing the data which is currently being processed. We have installed this CPU which is our central processing unit which is our main processing system of our computer. We have also installed thermal compound which allows the heat to get transferred from CPU to heatsink very easily. And also we have installed this heatsink which drags the heat from the CPU and throws it on the air on surrounding. Now we have to click on this install motherboard button. Now the motherboard gets installed inside the CPU case. For installing the motherboard inside the CPU case, we have to align this motherboard to the case. The motherboard is installed, but we have to secure the motherboard using the motherboard screws. So select the motherboard screws, drag it right here and leave it on the highlighted area. All the screws has been now installed. Select OK. Now it's time to install the adapter cards. Go to adapter cards. And you can also click show instruction. It's time to install the adapter cards. Adapter cards are additional cards which adds more functionalities to your computer. For example, first we have our NIC card which is our network interface card. It is used for getting network connectivity through wired connection. We have a wireless NIC card which is used for getting a wireless Wi-Fi connection for your network. And we have another one which is our video adapter which allows us to have a better graphics. So first select this NIC card right here. Click on it and drag it on this highlighted area. NIC card is installed. We have to secure it by using the NIC card screw. Now it's time to install this wireless NIC card. Click on this wireless NIC card and drag it to the highlighted area. It is installed. We have to secure it using the screw. So select it and drag it right here. And the next one is the video adapter card. Select the video adapter card, drag it to this area which is our PCI Express 16 slot. PCI Express is the latest adapter slot used for connecting different adapter cards. Leave it on the highlighted area and secure it using the video adapter screw. We have installed all the adapter cards. Select OK. Now go to internal drives section. Click on this internal drive. Internal drives means the hard disk drive which we have to install. Hard disk drive is used for storing the data permanently. You can click on the show instruction option. So for installing the hard disk drive, click on the hard disk drive and put it on this highlighted area. Leave it, align the hard disk and click.
click on this button to install it. Now we have to secure this hard drive using the screws. The hard disk drive is now secured. The installation of cable parts will come later on. Select OK. Now it's time to install the drives in external base which includes the CD-ROM and the outdated floppy disk. Go to this drives in external bay and click on it. The first we have is the optical drive right here. Select the optical drive and drag it to the highlighted area. Align it and use this button to install the DVD-ROM or optical drive. Use the optical drive screws to secure it on the proper place. Next device we have is the floppy drive. Select the floppy drive and drag it on the highlighted area. Align it and use this button to install it. Now use floppy drive screws to secure them in the proper place. Click OK. Now it's time to install the internal and external cables. Click on internal cables. In this option, we will install all the internal power cables and data cables like 20 pin ADX power cable which is this cable is used for giving power to the main motherboard. 4 pin auxiliary power which is uh, this cable it is used for giving the additional power to the motherboard. SATA power is used for giving power to the hard drive. Molex power is used for giving power to the CD-ROM. And Burst power is used for giving power to the floppies. Case fan power is used for giving power to this fan. SATA cable is used for giving the data connection from motherboard to the hard drive. PATA is used for giving the data connection from motherboard to the CD-ROM and floppy drive data connection at the end. So we need to install all of these cables. Let's begin with installing the power cable from the power supply to the motherboard. The first cable we have is this. Select the cable. You will see the highlighted area on the motherboard. Click right here. Align it. Now click on this one which is a 4 pin auxiliary power connection. It gives an additional power to regulate the CPU voltage. We can install it on this portion. So click on it, align it. As you can see this is a lock which comes right here and it makes the cable connection very secured. Click on this button. Now. Select this one, which is a Molex power connection. It is used for giving the power to CD-ROM. You can see the highlighted portion right here. Click on it. The connection is done. Now click on this cable. It is used for giving the power to the floppy drive. So the highlighted portion is right here. Go and click on it. Let's align it first. Now select this cable. This is a power connection which is used for powering the hard drive. Now go to this highlighted area and click on it. So all the power cables has been connected. We have one left right here. This is the CPU case fan power. Click on it and click on this highlighted area to install it. Let's align first. Now all the power cables has been installed. It's time to install the data cable as well. You can see the first data cable is right here which is a PATA cable. It is used for transferring the data between the motherboard to the CD-ROM. Select the PATA cable and you can see the highlighted area right here. Go and leave it. Let's align it. 
and install it. Now select this other end and select this end where the CD-ROM is. Click on it, align the cable and install it. The data connection and the power connection for CD-ROM is completed. Now let's add the floppy cables which is used to carry the data between the motherboard and the floppy drive. Select the floppy cable and drag it right here where it is highlighted. Leave the cable, turn the cable to align it, select this button to install it. Ok, now click on this highlighted portion, select this highlighted portion, install the cable. Ok, so the floppy data cable is also now connected. It's time to connect the data cable between the hard drive and the motherboard. This is the SATA SATA cable which is a data cable for the hard drive. Click on this cable and drag it right here where the SATA port lies. Leave the cable and align the cable. If you see there is a L shape on the connector and the L shape in the cable. We need to make sure that this L shape is aligned and click on this. Again click on the another end. Click on right here. Align this L chip with the L chip in the hard disk in this way and install it. So, all the data cables and the power cables inside the CPU is installed. Select OK. Now it's time to connect the external cables. So, go to the external cable section. First, we have to drag the case panel and cover the CPU from this side and the both side. Use the screw to secure the panel. We need to connect the CPU with the external devices like the monitor, keyboard, mouse, USB, Ethernet, parallel connection and the power. First select this monitor connection and drag it on this highlighted area. Leave it. Align the connection. Now it is installed. Now let's install the keyboard. Select the keyboard and drag it on this port. Align it. Keyboard and mouse right here is using PS2 connection but currently all the keyboard and mouse we get on USB connection. So uh, select the mouse, drag it right here and install it. Select the USB port and drag it right here on the highlighted area. Align the cable. Now it's time to install the Ethernet cable. Click on the Ethernet cable and drag it right here because we have installed the NIC card on this slot. So leave the cable on this port. This connector we call it as the RJ45 connector. Align it properly and click on this port. Now the wired connection for internet is also done. We need to now have a wireless connection as well. For this we will install this wireless antenna. Click on this wireless antenna and drag it and put it on this highlighted area. Leave it. Now the last connection is the power cord connection. Select this power cord and drag it right here and leave the cable. Align it, install it. So with this we have assembled a whole PC with all the connections properly done and we can see that the computer system is running.
you can click on OK. This is the step by step option of the assembling process in a IT Essential Virtual Desktop activity. You can now go to the test option and you can test your ability to install all these by yourself. You can see there are all the components. So, in this mode, uh, you should have to use this mode to test your ability to assemble a desktop computer from scratch. You must still follow the layers of the axis. However, you will not receive any instruction. Once you have completed all layer, you will automatically be forwarded to the next level of axis. If you need instruction, switch to learning mode or return to the course. First, we have to install the case. So let's go to this case panel and install it. You can see that there is no any instruction given on this side. Okay, now you can click on this return to previous layer to get another test. Install all these cables. So I have installed all the cables, click on this return to previous layer once again, once again. Now we can test to install these components of external base. Okay, so all the component testing can be done individually by yourself. I have tested the cables, internal cable, external cable, external base, test ourselves on installing the hard disk. You can now test yourself of installing these adapter cards. So, adapter card is also successfully tested. Return to previous layer. Return to previous layer. Now, test yourself for the motherboard. So the testing for motherboard is also successfully done. You can click on return to previous layer. 
return to previous layer and test yourself for the power supply as well. In this way, we have successfully tested all the component installation once again. So on the learn step, you will get the step-by-step -step instruction for all of these components. In the test menu, you have to use your own ability and understanding to assemble the desktop. And last one, we have the explore option. On the explore option, uh, you can take it as a quick reference to the components which is there on installed state. You can select this option to choose different views of your PC and uh, you can click on any of the plus device like if you click on this plus device it will highlight uh, information about the power supply a power supply converts AC power from an outlet to into the DC power for the computer you can if you want to further look into the power supply click on this power supply you get this 360 view you can click on any of these options to get a surrounding view of the component Similarly, you can click on this plus sign for motherboard and use this button to see all the view. So this is the input output port for all of our external devices. This is used for uh, PS2 mouse port, PS2 keyboard port, serial port, VGA port, female port for monitor. This is the parallel port which is used for the older printers. This is the firewire port which is used for the longer data transmission using wire. These are USB ports for connecting external peripheral devices. This is Ethernet port for connecting the wired network connection. And these are the microphone jack, headphone jack and line in jack. Similarly, you can click on these components to learn about the video adapter cards wireless NIC card this is the SATA cable used for transferring data between the hard disk and the motherboard or computer it has the 7 pins which is a L shape connector. This is the lock. This is the hard disk drive. It is a SATA hard disk drive. You can see the connectors. This is the SATA 15 pin power connector. This is the data connector and jumper pins and Molex power connector. In case if you don't have the SATA power connector, you can use Molex power connector in order to give the power to this SATA hard drive. You can use this floppy drive section for viewing from all the angles. And similarly other components, optical drive, PATA cables, heatsink fan and many more. So this is all about the understanding of Cisco virtual activity desktop provided for the course of IT essentials by Cisco Networking Academy. I hope you learned the process of assembling a PC properly. So this is it for today. I hope you liked the video. If you liked the video, please do hit the like button, comment down your thoughts and subscribe to the channel. We will see you on the next video of virtual activity laptop. Until then, signing off. Have a good day. Bye-bye.